Science usually takes many, many months to years to plan and prepare because of the severity and this impact of the disease in, in this country and in the world. We knew it had to be looked at really quickly. So we were able to scan our first patient in about May, and then we've been scanning since then. MRI, or magnetic resonance imaging, that uses a really strong magnet to take pictures inside the brain. What we're doing here, which is different from other studies, is we're using a very powerful uh, MRI scanner, which is more powerful than a typical hospital MRI scanner. You are experiencing a magnetic field of seven Tesla. A one Tesla magnet would, would pick up a car, so our seven Tesla magnet is incredibly strong. And then we measure the small signals that the water inside the brain is, is giving off. We put all those signals, measure them through supercomputers, and that turns those into pictures um, of the brain. We can look at what the brain looks like, and we can see how that might reflect some of the inflammation or other damage that COVID may be causing. But we can also look at what the brain is doing. We can look at the blood flow and how the brain is functioning. And we can look at the blood flow in, in a particular part of the brain, the brain stem, deep down inside the brain. If we saw some changes in the COVID patients, it might help us understand how COVID is affecting the person's ability to breathe and regulate their breathing, which we do know is one of the symptoms that some people experience long after the uh, initial infection. We're also measuring some of the brain chemistry. We're looking at some of the key chemicals, the neurotransmitters inside the brain, and we're looking to see where any of those are affected. Now, these are really, really tiny concentrations that we're trying to pick up here. When we look at these really small changes across a lot of people, it might indicate what part of the, the cell functioning is being affected by the disease. The brain responds very quickly and rapidly to the assaults that it has on it. And so, uh, effect of COVID, the brain is going to be responding to that. And looking at the long-term effects will be quite important for understanding the disease.